What is up, everybody? It is Grand Prix GTP02 here coming to you once again from the north end of Houston, Texas. Now, it's been said a good few times before that sometimes the biggest things can come in small packages, and that may very well be the case today. But I think I'm going to let you guys decide on that one as we take a look at the all-new 2018 Hyundai Accent. So let's get to it. And as always, we begin here with the business end of things. Now, although pretty much the entire accent is brand new here for 2018, one of the areas that it seems Hyundai didn't really focus too much attention on is up here in the engine bay. All the new accent trims are powered by the same 1.6 liter double overhead cam direct injected four cylinder engine that also features 16 valves and Hyundai's dual continuous variable valve timing. It's now been reworked slightly to make only 130 horsepower and 119 pound-feet of torque, which is a slight downgrade in power compared to the last generation. However, where it loses power, it now makes up for that in fuel economy, scoring now 28 in the city and 38 miles per gallon on the highway for automatic models, or if you go for the lowest end trim with the available manual transmission, that now drops to 28 in the city and 37 on the highway. Now, out of the Accent's three trim levels here for 2018, being the SE, SEL, and the new Limited trim, only the upper end Limited will be available as standard with Hyundai's Proximity Key keyless access system with push-button ignition. Unfortunately, my tester is not the Limited, so it has to make do with Hyundai's newer all-in-one key fob here with the switchblade key design. You have your basic fo uh, functions, lock, unlock, hold this button for the trunk, and panic, then simply push the little silver button on top and and out pops your keyblade. You also do have a new ignition chime for 2018 this year, which is pretty nice. Now, when it comes to the Accent's all-new design here for 2018, I will say it's a little bit of a mixed bag of feelings for me. And the main reason I say that is, albeit the fact that Hyundai has taken a few more great strides to really differentiate this car from its predecessor, including making it slightly longer and slightly wider, unfortunately, it really doesn't feel like this car's features justify its slight hike in price tag. Now, as shown here on my pomegranate red SEL Accent sedan, we're looking at a sticker price of just over $18,300. Now that of course is after you add in all the destination fees and whatnot over the standard SEL MSRP of $17,295. Now you can buy a fully stripped out version of this thing for about 14 and a half grand, but that basically means you lose absolutely everything but the basics. Now between the SE and the SEL, there's really not too much to differentiate the, uh, the two, and that really begins here at the front. On the SEL that I have here, we have automatic standard halogen headlights. If you go with the limited, you will upgrade these to projectors with LED daytime running lights. But on both the SE and SEL, unfortunately, you don't even get fog lights. Again, you have to go for the over $19,000 limited trim in order to even get such an option. Now, the front fascia still does have the integrated wheel air curtains here in the front, which is a nice little touch, helping aid in that almost 40 mile per gallon fuel efficiency number. But between the SE and the SEL, Unfortunately, there's not even too much in the way of bling up here aside from these slight chrome strips running around this newly refreshed grill here, but otherwise it's just standard black plastic. Now again, if you go with the limited trim, this Hyundai logo here actually turns into a sensor for a new forward collision warning system that is standard on the Accent Limited as well as a brand new grill design to finish it off. 
Now when it comes to what you're rolling on, the Accent offers three different wheel variations, again depending on which trim level you go with. My SEL tester here is wearing the 15 inch painted aluminum alloy wheels, whereas the lower end SE has to make do with 15 inch steel wheels with the appropriate hubcaps. However, the Accent can have a little bit of bling when you go for the upper end limited trim, which upgrades these to 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels. Now behind the wheels, we do have a full four wheel disc brake setup here, which is new for 2018. I believe the 17s and older actually had drum brakes in the rear, which is a little bit on the old school side. But speaking of old school, we have a Mc, uh, McPherson strut suspension up here in the front, but in the back, we have a regular old torsen beam suspension with coil springs to go along with it. Now at a length of 172.6 inches long, the Accent is still the smallest offering here in the United States from Hyundai North America. And unfortunately, even though it's been lengthened by over half an inch and its price tag has been slightly inflated compared to its predecessor, unfortunately, just like before, its features list is not by any means what I would call extensive. I mean, just here on my SEL tester, we have standard body colored side view mirrors, which are power adjustable, but unfortunately, none of the trim levels for 2018 will feature any kind of a blind spot monitoring system. Standard on the SEL and Limited, however, is a small driver's blind spot mirror, which is a little cut out in the upper corner of the mirror here, but unfortunately, none of the trim levels, again, will benefit from blind spot monitoring. Now, also missing uh, from my particular tester here is any kind of a sunroof. Now, that is standard on the Limited trim, but again, you do have to shell out the big bucks in order to get such a feature. Now, as we move to the Accent's posterior, I can really start to see why people, including myself, have started to call this thing the baby Elantra. I mean, looking at some of the Accent's design cues here in the rear, we do have these new swept back taillights, which the inner workings actually do seem to mimic today's current generation Elantra uh, with these little L-shaped designs here inside. Unfortunately, no LED taillights here on my tester. Unfortunately, again, you have to go with the Limited in order to get such a feature, but I really actually think I like it a lot more from the back than I do from the front. It really feels like they went a little bit more aggressive with certain design elements back here, and I do like the fact it is a little bit more uh, curvaceous back here, shall I say. Now, even though you do have a backup camera, as noted right here uh, above the license plate, unfortunately, there is no rear parking assist system on any of the trim levels, I do believe. I'll have to check that once again. Um, and also, if you want the hands-free smart trunk access, you again have to go for the limited trim level, which does include the proximity key keyless access system. Now, finishing things up here on the exterior, I will say that Hyundai has definitely given it a valiant effort to completely redesign their smallest offering here in the U.S. market. However, I will say that with the lacking in features, and again, it's slightly inflated price tag compared to before, I'm not exactly sure how well it will hold up in the subcompact market. However, like I said, it is a drastic departure compared to the very dated looking design, which has been in place since 2012. Now, while the exterior has been redesigned, what about the inside? Well, let's open the door and find out. Now, just like it can be said about the exterior, looking at the Accent's interior really does still remind you that you have bought one of the cheapest entries in the automotive market. Now, granted, the SEL that I have here does still have a few more niceties compared to the baseline SE. It is still not the nicest car of the breed. We do have these standard black cloth seats. The Limited does offer what Hyundai calls the premium cloth seats, but I'm not sure how much more premium you can get in terms of cloth. Uh, also, on the limited these seats can be heated unfortunately not an option that i can demonstrate for you here uh, with my tester that i have today they are six-way manually adjustable including manual height manual recline and manual uh, distance control on all trims there are no power seat adjustments here even though this is an all-new car now, in terms of aesthetics, again, it is pretty cheap. A lot of plastics here, especially across the upper portion of the door and even here in the middle. You do have a nice little padded cloth insert here in the middle, which is a nice little way to break up uh, the inside. But here, we do have a solid hard touch plastic armrest. Not exactly a nice place to rest your arm, but then again, you bought an under $20,000 car. Need I say more? You still do have a few powered niceties here, including power mirrors, uh, keyless entry, or excuse me, uh, keyless entry and power door locks. Uh, the keyless access comes on the limited again, uh, window locks, and of course, all power windows, including an auto down driver's window here on the SEL. I believe that turns into a fully automatic window on the limited trim. 
Now, even though Hyundai has made a valiant attempt to completely rework this accent here for 2018, unfortunately, sitting here in the driver's seat, I feel like a good few elements of this interior are really a parts bin special. I mean, things like the steering wheel and even some of the center stack and controls and stuff feels like it has been pulled straight out of a lot of Hyundai's other vehicles. Granted, uh, granted the accent does have a few little new touches, including the newer gauge cluster and maybe a newer face here for things like the climate control and so on, but really a lot of the elements in this interior do feel quite familiar, uh, especially when compared to other Hyundai products of today. Now, starting here in front of the driver, my SEL tester does have a vinyl wrapped steering wheel. It's a very hard touch, kind of plasticky feeling. I think the Limited gives you a leather wrapped wheel, um, but it's a nice three spoke design, very comparative to today's uh, generation Elantra, uh, especially in terms of all the controls and whatnot. Uh, my SEL does offer Bluetooth with voice recognition, Bluetooth is standard on all trims, but the SEL and the Limited give you the voice recognition option. And over here on the right, we do have your standard cruise control functions as well. Now, when it comes to your rather basic looking driver information center, there's really only three main functions found throughout the entire thing. Now, the home screen here displays things like your distance to empty, your average miles per gallon, your odometer, outside temperature gauge, and what gear you're in, but just push the trip button on the steering wheel and it takes you to trip A and trip B. And then of course it says speed off. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I'll have to look a little bit further into that, but leave it alone for a couple seconds and it goes right back to your home screen. So aside from the fact it looks basic, the functions of it are also very basic as well. Now moving things over here to the center console, one of the things I'm happy to report and is pretty obvious as well, is finally the Accent has received a proper infotainment system, something it never benefited from before in its previous design. Now in the SEL and limited trims, you get the seven inch touchscreen display. If you go for the SE, I think it's a five inch uh, touchscreen display, but it's pretty familiar. It does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And of course you can go into your main menu and scroll through the options like a smartphone. Now, touch response is actually pretty good. As you can see, it responds very quickly to my finger. Um, unfortunately, no navigation is available even on the uppermost trims, but I'm happy to report that finally the Accent has received a proper infotainment screen. Now, you do have a backup camera as well, as I mentioned, so just put the car in reverse. And of course, when you turn the wheel, you do get trajectory as well. So as you can see, the guidance lines will follow whichever way you turn the steering wheel. Now, we do have the automatic door locks as well. So as you can hear, when I put the car in any gear, in any gear other than park, of course, the doors will lock, and then when I put it in park, they will unlock. Now, unfortunately, you only get a at both at most a six speaker audio system, and it is good, but I will say it's definitely not the best when it comes to people that are slightly bigger music heads like myself. Now, like I said, even with only six speakers, the stereo in here is good, but it is far from the best thing that a big music head like me has ever heard. Now, you do have all your typical touchscreen functions as well up here. Um, and of course, you do have the physical button should you decide you don't want to go through all of the touchscreen and whatnot. You do have your radio, uh, media such as USB and auxiliary inputs, Bluetooth phone connectivity. You can actually turn the display off just with this DISP button here. Just push it again and it turns right back on. You have your different applications functions functions, seek track buttons, and of course the setup button as well. Now you also do have your power and uh, volume knob and also your tuning knob to go along with it. Now, even though my tester is the SEL, unfortunately, it does not benefit from any kind of automatic dual zone climate control function. Unfortunately, the setup in here is very simplistic. You do have your temperature controls over here on the right hand, on the left hand side, excuse me, of the uh, controls. You have your fan speed here in the middle, air conditioning, recycling, rear defroster, your climate zones, including front defrost over here on the right. I believe it's actually cable driven because when you turn it, you can actually hear it physically shift somewhere back there behind uh, the dashboard. And then of course your main AC button there in the middle. Now, one area where the accent definitely does benefit is with the new drive mode select. Now there is no eco function on here uh, from what I've tried. You just push this and you have two different modes, sport and normal. So right now we're in normal, as you can see, no icon on the dash, but the moment you press that button, a nice little orange sport icon appears over here in your tachometer, uh, which means means that this car suddenly has grown a slightly sportier and sharper personality. 
Now down here at the base of the center console, you of course do have your USB and auxiliary inputs front and center. I'm loving the blue backlighting to all of the numerics in here. It's always been kind of a signature feature for Hyundai lately, and I really do like it, uh, especially in certain cases like down here. You do have two 12 volt, 180 watt outlets on either side, as well as a nice little storage cubby, probably big enough for your wallet or some of today's larger smartphones. And now we move on to the transmission, and I'm sad to report there's nothing fancy here, or maybe that's a good thing. I'm not sure. But all I know is that the lowest end SE comes standard with a six speed manual transmission. However, all other trims, uh, such as a slightly better equipped SE and up, come with Hyundai's electronically controlled six speed automatic transmission with the Shifttronic manual shifting capabilities. Now, I have taken this car on a little bit of a drive around the block, and I will tell you that using the manual mode combined with the sport mode in drive mode in the uh, drive mode select system actually does make this car feel a slight bit more peppy and I mean slight but I did notice a slight little difference in performance when I put the car in sport and started using the manual mode myself. Now, moving on from the transmission, one thing I'm happy to report is there's no electronic parking brake here, no foot-operated pedal, just a good old yankable big handbrake lever here. I'm so glad that Hyundai put that, at least in some of their cars here. Um, you'll notice that you have two reasonably sized cup holders, probably big enough for your big gulp there from 7-Eleven. And then, of course, we have a proper armrest now. Many of you guys may remember the older generation Accent simply had a little driver's armrest, and the center console just seemed to disappear off into the back seat, but now we have a nice little center console with a decent amount of storage. You could probably fit, you know, maybe some napkins or something basic down in there, but other than that, it is pretty simplistic, but all the, all the same, a great place to rest your arm now that it has a proper console in place of the armrest. Now, being that the Accent is still very much a subcompact car, rear occupants will find that unfortunately there is not a whole lot of room to spare back here, especially when you're taller like myself at six foot one. You can see with the seat in the position I would have while I'm driving it, my knees are square in the driver's back. So I don't think that would be too comfortable for your front occupants if you have someone rather tall that you decide to put here in the back. Now on my SEL tester, we do have a single map pocket here in the back of the passenger seat so no dual map pockets there. No real big complaining issues though. But you do have a small little USB charger here at the back of the center console, which is nice for your rear occupants should you decide to have any. But otherwise, if you want to increase your cargo space a little bit, you do actually have 60-40 split fold rear seats, which release by simply pulling on the tab on the upper corners of the seats, and then they just simply fold forward. Now, even though the Accent has grown about a half an inch in length or so, one of the areas that's actually stayed the same relative to before is actually in the cargo area. So we pop the trunk here using the key fob. You can also use a lever found on the uh, driver's floor. Um, but when you open it up, you actually reveal a pretty sizable area, 13.7 cubic feet of cargo space. And that is before you fold down those 60-40 split fold rear seats. Now, when you do the math, that's actually about on par with a current generation Hyundai Elantra. So this car does actually benefit, especially in the sedan form here, with a little bit better cargo volume. Now, we lift up the floor mat and we do actually have a compact spare tire and appropriate toolkit. So no fix a flat here. Hyundai actually gives you a proper compact spare. So it's nice to see that the Accent still does have a little bit of room to spare, if you will, here in the trunk. Now, unfortunately, being a subcompact car, safety is not exactly the biggest priority when it comes to this particular category of vehicle. Now, it's no surprise that the Accent doesn't have a wide array of today's active safety features, although if you go with the limited trim level, you will get a standard forward collision assist and avoidance system, um, again, as standard equipment. But other than that, there's no blind spot monitoring, there's no active cruise control, nothing like that. This is a under $20,000 car, keep in mind. However, as we step into the passenger side here and get all settled in, we do have the usual array of airbags. We have dual front impact airbags, side curtain and side impact airbags as noted by things like the little logo up here on the B pillar. Now, in terms of passenger comfort, we have just as much comfort as we do here in the front. Can't say the same for the backseat passengers as you saw before, but again, four-way uh, manual adjustments here on the passenger seat. No height adjustment, unfortunately, so the passenger uh, loses out on that. But in terms of the glove box, it is somewhat damped. It does fall somewhat slowly, but it's not lined in felt, and of course you have all your appropriate reading materials and stuff in here as well. 
But overall, uh, compared to before, I really will say that the accent has made a bit of a leap here into the modern age. If it wasn't for the fact that the features don't really look like they justify the price tag, I would say that this is actually a pretty good buy when it comes to the subcompact category. But if you're looking for just a basic mode of transportation and don't have a whole lot of money to spend, then I would say that the accent should be at least a contender when it comes to your buying list. And unfortunately, on that note, everybody, our time here with the all-new 2018 Hyundai Accent has now, unfortunately, drawn to a close. I do hope everybody's enjoyed this review as much as I've had fun making it for y'all. Now, if you guys like what you see, please do give this video a thumbs up, and also be sure to click that subscribe button down below for many more videos like this and more to come in the future. But in the end, a huge thanks goes out to the folks here at Humble Hyundai once again for providing us with this vehicle for us to have a look at today. But in the end, guys, from the north end of Houston, Texas. This has been Grand Prix GTP 02 signing out. Until next time, take care everybody and stay safe.